Hello, my name is Ted. I'm a repair technician for Whole Hate Love Repair Center. Um, this video is to show you how to change the thermal fuse on the boiler in case you have lost power to the machine. Uh, what has happened is the thermal fuse has failed or a, circuit, a surge of power and made it blow or something. For whatever reason it may be, it's cutting power off to the machine and this is what we're going to do to change it. Okay. Um, you just need a few tools. Um, Strippers, wire strippers, any kind will do. Um, we need a, a wire or a butt connector crimping tool, wire tool, it's uh, to make crimp things for butt connections uh, is what it's called. Um, Phillips screwdriver, take out two screws on the top panel. Uh, just in case we need to remove some wires, you need a flat blade screwdriver. Also, we gotta remove the bracket around the button control on the front of the machine to get the wires out of our way. Uh, some zip ties because we're going to be cutting some. A little thing for cutting the zip ties and cutting off the excess of the zip ties when we put new ones on. And then this is what we're changing. This is the thermal fuse. Uh, we, I believe there's going to be a link or something on the video for this. It's a DM1040 is the part number. Um, it comes with the butt connectors um, and we'll crimp those onto the wires and then put the butt connector on and then butt connect or crimp them onto each end of the thermal fuse. This is what's preventing power to your machine. Okay. It's a little fuse. It's temperature regulated, so when it hits a certain temperature, it cuts it right off. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the top, remove your funnel lid. Two screws on the back of the panel is the only two that hold this top panel in. So you're going to remove them and get those out of the way. Set them off to the side. Don't lose them. We're going to lift up on the top here on the back just at the back and we're going to slide it out of these teeth right here. Okay. Okay. Once you get it slid out of those teeth, the whole lid will come up and out. I'm going to set it off to the side. Now, the thermal fuse is right here inside of this rubber tubing. It goes from one side of the boiler to the other side. There's this little bracket that holds the fuse into place and a certain spot on the top of the boiler. Make sure when we put this back together that that thermal fuse is underneath the bracket. Uh, some people tend not to get it underneath there or they just leave it hanging out without it being on the boiler. That's not going to be helpful. So that little bracket again, just point that out. This right. one right here. It's got one screw that holds it in. It holds the fuse over top of the fuse in place on top of the boiler. All right. Okay. Cool. So the first thing we got to do is we need to move this switch out of our way so we can get room to work on this little area right here. Mm -hmm. There's two little spring clips on either side of the switch. Can we turn the machine a little bit? Just got done at a very good angle at that. Yeah, so if I go over here. Uh, there we I'm going to turn it facing me anyway because yep. I can't do this part from the back. Okay. So we're going to turn it this way. There's a little spring clip on each side of the switch. Okay. Uh, we need to push each clip in a little bit and get this bracket to slide off first. And then we got to push them in again to get the switch to come forward. Okay. So that's what you need the flat blade screwdriver for. I usually use the edge of the housing and kind of get my screwdriver on the spring as close as I can to the front of the spring and push it in and you can see how it let loose on this. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to just pry in towards the button switch until that slides right off. All right. We're just going to leave that alone at the moment because now we got to push on the same spring and push on the back of the housing of the switch. You see how I got it to go through the opening right there? Yeah. So once it started on the opening on that side, you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're just going to push it in just so you can get it through the hole. I accidentally pushed this one back through. We'll go back through and push on this one. back here. and forth there. To... Yeah, once you get it, you'll oh, see, yeah. and it will just literally come out of the housing. At okay. this point, we're going to slide this little bracket back until we get to a bunch of wires that are closely bunched together because there's a gap on the clip. Mm -hmm. So you can get your wires to go through there, but you got to go down to an area where it's least. Thin enough. Yeah. And we're just going to set that off to the side. Now that we got that, we can straighten the wires out a little bit and just let it hang off the front. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to remove a couple wires to get this so we can get it out and work on it. I like to remove these two wires here. 
Now, if you want, take a picture of how the wires go, number them, letter them, however you want with a marker, um, because you need to make sure these go back on the same way that they come off. These are definitely key to make sure they're back on the same way. Okay. Um, so we're just gonna pull these off and get them out of the way, okay? At least those two. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that one is shorter than the other one anyway, so you really can't mess that up. All right. So we're just gonna slide those down out of the way. Now you can see we're a little bit more open on this. Um, I also tend to pull this one out sometimes and just push that one out of the way. Now this is the bracket that's holding the fuse in. You can see the whole rubber tube. You need the Phillips screwdriver. And you can, sometimes a little stiff when you first try to get it to break through, but once you do, it'll be fine. You can either back it away just enough where as you're pulling up on the clip, you can move it off to the side like that. Mm -hmm. Once you get to a certain height, you can move it, or you can just take it completely off. It's just a little screw, okay? And it goes into that right there. Okay. Either way is fine. I always tend to t not take it all the way and just slide it over to the one side because, I don't know, that's just how I do it. And you've done hundreds of Yeah, I've done hundreds of repairs on uh, glass class. I've been here almost nine years, so I've done a lot of repairs. Okay. So now that we have the clip off, we can move the fuse around. There's your fuse right here. And you can see it's covered with this little rubber tubing. Now what we need to do is we need to cut the zip ties um, on this end of it and then some down along this way so we can straighten the wire out and slide the tubing off of the fuse area. Okay. So we're gonna take our little cutters and just cut the zip tie a little bit so you can pull it off. Being careful not to cut other wires. Of yeah, course. yeah, <laughs> make sure you don't cut the wires. That wouldn't be good. Um, I'm gonna cut a few of these zip ties. Also be careful not to cut the wires. If you get in between a couple of wires with your cutters, you can just usually let, use that little channel with the between the wires to slide your cutters along. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do one more. I wanna make sure I have enough excess wire to slide that tubing off. So now I'm just gonna pull these off, get them out of the way, and then we're gonna put new ones on when we're done. So now you can see I can move this wire that the fuse is on, mm -hmm. okay? Now I'm going to slide this tube, which sometimes can be stuck. You just gotta work with it a little bit. Once you get it going, it will slide off. And then sometimes if you straighten out this wire here on this end, it will slide a little bit easier. It's just a little bit of working around with it. And that's why I cut all these zip ties so it has room to move somewhere. If you didn't have that, it wouldn't go anywhere and you'd be fighting with it constantly and that just makes it easier to get to the wires that the butt connect, or the, uh, the fuse is hooked to. Okay. So now we have the tubing out of the way, and you can see that the fuse is out in the open. Mm -hmm. uh, also, make sure you're working on, I should have said this at the beginning, but make sure it's unplugged. <laughs> um, and not hot also, because right. you'll burn yourself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it right at where they have the, the little butt connection here, mm -hmm. where it's crimped on. We're gonna do that at each side. and just get it out of the way. Okay. Okay. So now that's the old one. Now we need the wire strippers. Now if that fuse went bad, is it visibly bad? Can no. you look at it and tell? No. no, there's no visible way to tell it went okay. bad. It's like an internal thing. Right. Okay. So, okay. I mean, you can test it. If you have a tester, you can touch each end of it. And if there's continuity, Check for continuity. Okay. Uh, it means it's good. So okay. that means it's not the cause of your problem. But okay. usually if there's no power to the machine, that's usually the, that's the, the cause. Problem. Okay. So now we're just going to strip some of the wire back. Mm -hmm. oh, make sure you pick the right setting. So we just need a little bit of the wire okay. on all three of these because there's two wires on this end that you have to butt connect to. Okay. So we're just going to strip back a little bit of this one. I went a little bit longer on this side because we're going to have to make sure both of these wires are together Okay. in the butt connector, just like that. And then we can twist these together a little bit to make sure they stay together mm -hmm. when we go to put it into the butt connector. And you don't have to do the twist, especially if, you know, since we're putting a butt connector on, but force a habit, 
I just twist wires all the time. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to use the crimping tool. Um, as long as you don't use anything out of the extreme, you see there's different shapes. You don't want to use this one with a big U on it. Um, you want to use something that's going to crush it and flatten it out. Mm -hmm. um, this one I have a setting right here in the between these two teeth right there. I don't know if it's easy to see or not, but you can see once I force it together, it's basically going to flatten it out. Right. Um, and also, I don't know if it matters, but there you see the like the little seam on the butt connector right there. Mm -hmm. I always face that to one side of the pliers. I don't think it's necessary, but I always just make sure, and I line it up with the very edge. Okay. Okay. So now I have it in my crimping tool. I'm just gonna slide the wire in it, like that, and then squeeze down. And now you can remove your pliers and you can see nice it's connected. Play. We're going to do that with the other side. I always put the butt connectors in first because it'll be easy with both of them on and then we put the fuse in. We can just slide it into the butt connectors, crimp it down after we're, we're in there. So I'm going to do the same thing here, get on to this, the one setting I want to use. And we're going to fish the wire into the butt connector, if it'll let me. This one's a little thicker because you're... Yeah, it's got a little extra wire on it. Yeah. There we go, it's going in. Okay. And of course I, you know, stripped a little extra so it's not going to go all the way in. Okay. But we're going to have that rubber tubing going over it so it'll protect it. All good. Okay. okay, so now we have the butt connector on this end. Okay. Just make sure it's on there secure and it's not going to slide off. Don't be worried about a little extra wire hanging on the back. This one's got a tiny bit mm -hmm. because this is going to slide over and protect it yeah, from touching anything. Two, okay. The thermal fuse, I don't believe it really matters which way it goes on, but I always put it on the short end to the back side just like it came off. Okay. You know, just like on this guy, this was the short end, it was back here. Okay. Um, I think it works either way. So. We're going to set that off to the side. I'm going to get my crimping tool on the butt connector first, just like that. Then I'm going to set the fuse in there and crimp the thing around it, like that. Okay. Now you can see that the fold went a different way, so I'm just going to force this little extra little bit that kind of popped out and just kind of work it around like that. And then I'm going to connect it again because I saw the fuse starting to wiggle a little bit. So now, I make sure that's nice and secure. It's in there. Yeah, if it's loose, it'll it'll pull right out, and then you will lose connection. Right. Now I'm going to grab the other butt connector like that, and we're just going to bend the fuse a little bit. It's just a little simple cheap uh, wire that's connected to it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slide it into the opening here and just do the same thing. Squeeze it down. If you get the right squeeze on it first time, you won't have to mess with it after that. The, the other one I had a little bit of a lip on it that I had to worry about, but this one seems to be fine. You can see it's not moving. Okay. Okay. So now we got the new fuse in. We can work this tubing up and around. This will take a little bit of effort because you got to be patient and work back and forth and get it to slide forward and then you got to move it up a little bit and slide forward and you just got to move it over the connections and the fuse and just keep going until you get it over the other end. This one's being a little bit of a pain, usually it's not this difficult. <laughs> it's probably the hardest part, huh? That's it is, I mean this is the the, the, the tedious part of the job right. is just taking this rubber tubing off and then putting the rubber tubing back on. And we're getting there. It's going. <laughs> there we go. We're just about where I want it to be. I usually like to hang off the, the wires a little bit on both sides. You see we have a lot of excess here still so I can slide mm -hmm. it a little bit more down this side. And that's about good right there, I think. Yeah, that'll be fine. So now we're covering the whole thing because this is, you know, if this makes contact with anything, it's going to 
short it out. Right. So now we have the fuse in. We can force our wire back down in place a little bit. We're going to get the little holder with the screw in it. Usually it's easier if you have the screw in it, hold it in with your fingers, just like I am. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to have the fuse in it right away. You just need to get the screw started. So I'm going to get it started like I did. And we're going to put this underneath the holder. You can see the fuse right here. Yep. You can see there's like a grooved area right there. Okay. That's where the fuse needs to sit. It's so right. it's important that that fuse sits in that spot. Yeah, I mean, that's the spot where it needs to be in case the boiler overheats. It's, okay. it's, it's also temperature regulated. That's right. why it's there. It's the, if this boiler starts overheating because of a failure on a stat or something like that, yep. it'll continue to heat, and you don't want that to happen because as it's continuing to heat, you're building pressure, right. and that's not good. Uh, so that's why the fuse is there, because it'll shut the power off to the, the machine and prevent that from happening. Great. And that's why it's important to have it attached to the boiler, just like I have it here and how it was. Okay. Uh, you don't want it just hanging out somewhere. You don't want it not underneath this bracket. You know, you mm -hmm. just want to make sure it's installed that way. Uh, so now we have the new fuse in. We're just going to hook the wires back up. I'm going to put this one back on here. Mm -hmm. We have our other two the longer one, or if you have it labeled or take a picture, just <laughs> check it out. And then that one goes there. Okay. So now we have all the wires connected. We have that all done. At this point, I'm not gonna show you how to put the zip ties on. I mean, I'm, I'll do one. Okay. But I usually go down the other side here where I can get my hand in and grab the other end and just start it and work my way down and do a few more zip ties. Okay. And then, of course, cut off the excess, flip it around, just like that. Okay. And if you do that a few more times, you'll have a nice little bunch of wires, just like it was. Um, at this point, we're just got to move the switch back into place. So we need to make sure our little bracket here mm -hmm. slides on first, because if you force this in, you're going to have a hard time getting it on. So you go over the narrow area with that gap, just like that. Mm -hmm. You're going to slide this over the wires and push the switch back at the same time. Now at this point, I got my thumbs on the switch and I'm in the opening. So all I'm gonna do is push it, okay? Now the switch is out locked in, but the clip is not. Okay. So the easiest way to do the clip, especially with a flat blade screwdriver that's just wide enough, you can wedge it underneath that clip just like that. Mm -hmm. And you turn the handle and it nice goes trick. over it. Oh, nice trick. So do the same thing on the other side. You turn the handle, it's over the clip. Beautiful. So now your button won't move mm -hmm. and everything's in place. Um, if you want, you can put the zip tie back around here to keep the pump from wobbling around too much, which I always do. You can just run it around the wires in this black tubing. Make sure it's not too tight, of course. You don't want to yank it down. You just want it to, to hold away. Put that on. And then it's just a matter of putting your top back on, put the funnel in first, mm -hmm. go on an angle downwards at the front because you want to get this into the teeth. The two small ones go underneath, the big one goes on top, and you slide it in between there. Mm -hmm. And then you can see it's not dropping down like it's, you think it would because the funnel has to go through a hole that's down here, so you're going to angle it just a little bit with your fingers and you'll feel it go into the hole and then you can just let it go and drop. Okay. Uh, at that point, it's just a matter of putting uh, both of the screws back in on the top here. And this one. Having magnet tips are nice. Yes. <laughs> and you're done. Beautiful. So that's how to change the thermal fuse. Uh, it's, it's a little a little complicated, but not that bad. Um, hopefully this video is helpful. Um, and if you have power after that, you're good to go. All right, Todd, thanks. You're welcome. Want to learn more? Subscribe now so you'll know about the latest videos on everything coffee from Whole Latte Love.